It's a lovely sunny day, and Rupert hurries out to play. He meets no friends until, at last, he sees the foxes running fast. Do wait for me, calls Rupert, please. I want to go and climb some trees. The foxes say, yes, we'll come with you, and we'll take some eggs from bird's nest too. Rupert tells the foxes they must not, and a little bird thanks him a lot. Now Rupert thinks, it's strange to me. I wonder where my friends can be. So, feeling rather lonely there, he hurries home to Mr. Bear. They settle down to read and rest, till Rupert sees the words, Mare's Nest. What is a mare's nest? he cries. There's no such thing, his dad replies. But find one and bring it to me, and I'll happily take you to the sea. So Rupert looks for his chums without rest, and asks them to help him find the mare's nest. I'll help you, Algy says. Let's go and ask them at that farm below. Algy explains as they draw near. I know that Farmer Green lives here. The farmer laughs. What a silly request. You'll never find a real mare's nest. Just then, a bird warns Rupert with alarm. Give up your search. You'll come to harm. This frightens Algy and makes him glum. I'm going home, he tells his chum. Now... Rupert thinks, I'm worried too. I'll ask the wise owl what to do. He meets the hedgehog, but the bird returns before they speak a word. The bird has hurried back again to warn the bear, but all in vain. I must find owl, says Rupert, so the hedgehog shows him where to go. The owl says with a solemn stare, You cannot see a mare's nest, little bear. It's getting late as Rupert turns away. He'll have to leave it for today. The naughty foxes come dashing by. A huge bird's chasing us, they cry. What can they mean? Then Rupert sees a huge bird fly above the trees. Now, Rupert cries, what's this I found? A disc with broken chain upon the ground. At home, he shows his dad. What can it be? Some kind of seal, it seems to me. He mends the broken chain with care, watched by an eager little bear. That night, the bird makes such a din, so much so, Mrs. Bear comes running in. The seal's owner must be found, and so, in the morning, to PC Growler it must go. But Rupert soon has quite a shock, for birds fly round him in a flock. It seems just like a horrid dream. We think you have our seal, they scream. They push him till he sees once more the fearsome bird he saw flying before. He does look very cross today. Poor Rupert wants to run away. He stopped the foxes taking our eggs. Do not harm him, the little bird begs. Then Rupert holds the seal up high, and the huge bird gives a joyful cry. He proudly wears the seal and chain. Now he can do his king's work again. You've helped the messenger for our king. For you, the birds say, he'll do anything. Oh, good, cries Rupert Bear with glee. A mare's nest I would like to see. The king has such a mare, I know. Climb on my back and off we'll go. Without another word, the bird takes flight, with Rupert holding on very tight. The bird keeps on flying very high until they reach a palace in the sky. The Chamberlain comes out to see just who this visitor can be. He hears what Rupert would like to see and says, Ask our king, come with me. Your Majesty, I've done my very best to find a real mare's nest. Then I, says the king, will do my best to grant your very strange request. Two messengers are sent to bring the Chamberlain back to see the king. The king says, you may help this bear, and give him my royal seal to wear. The Chamberlain cries, follow me, and Rupert does so, eagerly. They go into a large office where a royal seal is given to Rupert Bear. It will keep you safe, so on your way, a sparrow will lead you without delay. The way is up a rocky slope, but Rupert follows, full of hope. There is the nest, the sparrow cries. 
and hurriedly away he flies. As Rupert begins to climb the rock, he suddenly has quite a shock. The nest begins to shake about, and then a horse's head looks out. The mare has wings and takes to flight. She is a fine and graceful sight. She lands and speaks to Rupert Bear. I see the royal seal you wear. I am the king's royal charger, and I carry him about this land. Oh, thank you, Rupert cries, and now I must climb down the rocks somehow. When Rupert comes, the birds fly round. The king's seals kept him safe and sound. The little bear stands still and sighs. I've thought of something else, he cries. I saw that mare's nest, thanks to you, but can my daddy see it too? The king, on hearing Rupert's plea, says, Bring my charger here to me. He orders fruit for Rupert Bear, while they await the flying mare. Tonight she'll appear before your dad. What the king says makes Rupert feel glad. Take this scroll for the birds of Nutwood, the king explains, for being so good. Now you may fly home on the mare. Give the scroll when you are there. All through the day the mare makes flight and will not land while it's light. When darkness falls, she lands with ease on one of Nutwood's tallest trees. Poor Rupert wears a worried frown. He wishes he was safely down. A dark shape heads for the tree. It's wise owl, Rupert shouts with glee. Your king says this scroll will tell how Nutwood birds have pleased him well. Rupert runs home with all his might. It is already quite late at night. P.C. Growler sees Rupert running alone. He decides to take the young bear home. How glad his parents are to see him well and hear the tale he has to tell. The bird king says you'll see the mare. Tonight the wise owl will take us there. Says Mrs. Bear, it's time for bed. Be off with you, you sleepy head. A sound now reaches Rupert's ear. Perhaps the wise owl is already here. He hurries down the stairs again to find his father and explain. It is the owl, he cries with glee, and now the mare's nest you shall see, says Mr. Bear. It's late, you know, but still, to please you, I will go. Poor Mrs. Bear is worried too when told what they propose to do. They find the wise owl outside. He's waiting there to be their guide. He leads them straight back to the tree. The mare's nest is quite plain to see. The mare flies off as they stand there. How wonderful, gasps Mr. Bear. Next morning, Mr. Bear is sure he dreamed it all the night before. So after breakfast, back they go. But now, the place they do not know. They search around but all in vain. They cannot find the nest again. A tiny bird to Rupert flies. I'll help you if you like, he cries. In great excitement, off they run. What luck, laughs Rupert. This is fun. But when they find the tree, oh dear, the nest has disappeared, I fear. Now when they start to look around, the nest is scattered on the ground. The bird explains, that's all you'll find. She never leaves her nest behind. Now Mr. Bear says, I agree. You've earned your visit to the sea. They go to ask that very day about the trains to Rocky Bay.